Did dinosaurs turn into birds? Did dinosaurs evolve into birds? That's certainly widely believed today. In fact, uh, most evolutionists now classify the birds under the dinosauria. So you might say birds aren't extinct, or dinosaurs aren't extinct. Uh, they're feeding from our bird feeders even as we speak here. Uh, not all evolutionists are in agreement that dinosaurs evolved into birds. Alan Fiducia, for example, who's a very well-known evolutionist, uh, Now, there have been actually very few proposals for how dinosaurs or reptiles changed into birds. Most textbooks don't even mention how this happened. They just remain silent. They just want our students to believe that dinosaurs evolved into birds and don't question it. In other words, there goes the whole topic of critical thinking and scientific analysis. Don't question this so-called fact of dinosaurs evolving to birds. Now, let's think of this for a moment. Why would a large, successful creature like a dinosaur even want to evolve into a tiny little bird with feathers? How do you explain that? And secondly, just wanting to change into something else will not allow you to change into something. In other words, if you want to change into a gorilla, you can try all you want. It's not going to happen. One explanation given by evolutionists is that some of these smaller reptiles or dinosaurs went up into the trees, out onto the branches, and then jumped off these branches. And then over millions and millions of years, these reptiles learned to glide and eventually evolved feathers and became birds. Now, three questions about this explanation. Number one, how do we know it is true? No one was there to see this. Number two, has it ever been observed? And the answer is no. And number three, are we making any assumptions here? And yes, we are. You see, this whole idea of dinosaurs changing into birds is speculation. If we were to jump off a branch the rest of our life, let's suppose we were to go up in these trees, jump off these branches, and we did it day in and day out. Do you know something? We won't grow feathers. We can flap our arms all we want. We won't grow feathers. Neither, neither will our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. All we're going to get is a lot of bumps and bruises, but no feathers. Therefore, how this happened is not science. It is speculation. A history of mistakes. Let's start with a creature called Archaeoraptor, a supposed major find, dinosaurs evolving to birds. It was reported in National Geographic in November 1999, including a nice picture of it. Now, let's read the claim from National Geographic, and they state, it's a missing link between terrestrial dinosaurs and birds that could actually fly. Preliminary study of the arms suggests that it was a better flyer than Archaeopteryx, the earliest known bird. Well, here's the problem with that statement. First, the National Geographic Society decided to publish the finding prior to the fossil being peer-reviewed. You see, Archaeoraptor ended up being a fake in which someone glued dinosaur and bird fossils together. The whole thing was a fake. And there's National Geographic promoting this as real science. Let's look at another claim here. A creature called Sinoceropteryx. Say that one fast, Sinoceropteryx. That was a small dinosaur fossil found in 1996 and it made the headlines because it was reported to have a coat of filament feathers or dino fuzz on it. Thus, Sinoceropteryx was hailed as a transitional fossil between birds and dinosaurs. The problem, after a thorough analysis from bird experts, including evolutionists, it was determined that this so-called dinofuzz was not evidence of feathers or even the beginnings of feathers. Instead, the dinosaur was found to have the remains of a collagenous 
fiber mesh work or a biological way of reinforcing the skin. No feathers, no dinophiles. Again, another great claim that was another big mistake. Let's look at another, Cardipteryx. First discovered in 1997 and featured, again, in the front cover of National Geographic. You can see the picture right there. Featured in July 1998 in National Geographic. Was thought to be a dinosaur with feathers, but has now been declared to be nothing more than a flightless bird. Let's look at another great claim called Microraptor. First discovered in 2001, was claimed to be a pigeon-sized dinosaur from about 120 million years ago. It had two pairs of wings, claws on its wings, teeth, and a tail. Claimed to be another missing link. But the feathers found on it are very modern, like the ones found on birds today. So Microraptor micro is not a good example of a bird evolution or bird evolving from a dinosaur. You see, the feathers are complete feathers. There have been no transitions of half scale, half feather found anywhere in the fossil record. We find scales and we find feathers, but nothing in between. Now let's look at the most popular dino bird used in the textbooks, the creature called Archaeopteryx. Let me read a quote from our textbooks. The first fossil ever found of an early bird-like animal is called Archaeopteryx. Although the fine points of bird evolution are hotly debated, one thing is certain, birds evolved from ancient reptiles. Well, they claim this creature is a transitional creature from reptile to bird. Why? So, well, some of the reasons it had claws on its wings and it had teeth. Well, let's examine the evidence. And let's examine the evidence that has been basically kept out of our textbooks. Number one, Archaeopteryx had perching feet. Dinosaurs and reptiles do not have perching feet. So it had perching feet identical to birds. The impression of the feathers that we have found in Archaeopteryx are identical to those of modern birds. So once again, no transition between scales and feathers. The cranium on Archaeopteryx is bird-like and not reptile-like. The teeth that were found in Archaeopteryx are typical of other toothed birds that have been found in the fossil record and not like reptiles. It had claws on its wings, but you know we have birds today that have claws on its wings. The young Hoetzen and the ostrich have hooks on their wings like claws. Third, now next, a bird, according to evolution, that is 75 million years older than Archaeopteryx has been discovered. So why would Archaeopteryx still be evolving to a bird if birds already existed for 75 million years? There's a major problem for evolutionists. Next, the inner ear of Archaeopteryx was completely bird-like, and the lungs of Archaeopteryx are much like birds and not reptiles. So what was Archaeopteryx? It is a bird. See, only birds have feathers. Yes, it was a very unique bird, but we have very unique birds today, such as the owl or the woodpecker. So Archaeopteryx, once again, is not evidence of dinosaurs evolving to birds. That is mere speculation in order to support a worldview. From a scientific point of view, I think the evidence is not compelling that uh, birds came from uh, uh, dinosaurs. Uh, there's several reasons for this. First of all, of course, dinosaurs are reptiles, although you might wonder whether that's even considered to be true nowadays. Uh, many evolutionists prefer to think of dinosaurs as warm-blooded creatures. There's no compelling evidence that they were warm-blooded. Uh, but some of the major differences between birds and dinosaurs are not in the bones, but in the soft tissue of the body, which of course is usually not preserved. For example, uh, the reptile lung uh, is quite different from the bird lung. Uh, birds have a lung which, as far as we know, is not found in uh, any other creature. It's a kind of a through-flow ventilation system where the air goes in uh, through the trachea, uh, but then exits from several positions in the lung to go out into air bags that are under the skin and sandwiched between the muscles. 
We see nothing like this uh, in uh, uh, reptiles. Uh, recently, fossils were found uh, of a dinosaur in which the soft tissue of the lung was reasonably well preserved, not as soft tissue, but of course mineralized. Uh, this appeared to be very much like a alligator lung, not like a bird lung. So the respiration is quite different and to turn a, a reptile into a bird would require a really radical difference in the whole respiratory system. Uh, there are other differences as well. Uh, both dinosaurs and birds, uh, at least most of them, have three fingers. Uh, that seems to look similar, except that uh, it's been shown that in the case of the dinosaurs, uh, the three fingers correspond to finger one, two, and three. That would be the thumb, forefinger, and next finger. In the case of birds, the fingers correspond to fingers two, three, and four. So uh, all, almost all uh, vertebrates that uh, walk on four limbs or fly uh, develop in the embryo with five fingers, but uh, here we see uh, the five fingers being reduced to three, and uh, different fingers are used in the dinosaur and the uh, bird, which would suggest they're not related. I think my most compelling evidence that dinosaurs did not evolve into birds is the whole problem of turning a reptile scale into a feather. Uh, these are very different biological structures. Even though both uh, are appendages of the skin and both contain keratins, uh, they are developmentally and every other way very different. Uh, a scale uh, is sort of like a fold in the skin and several scales are one fold after another. That's why scales are shed as a sheet from reptiles. But feathers are shed in matched pairs, in the case of birds. Uh, birds do not shed their whole skin the way reptiles do. So that developmentally the structures are different and of course under the microscope it's hard to imagine something uh, that differs more than the structure of a reptile scale on a feather. When the BBC produced the Walking with the Dinosaur series several years ago, they had to search the globe for appropriate filming locations. But whenever they discovered an otherwise suitable site, the ground was inevitably covered in grass. And back in the year 1999, that was an evolutionary impossibility. You see, until recently, most scientists thought that grasses first evolved around 55 million years ago, long after the supposed extinction of the dinosaurs. But since then, studies of fossilised dinosaur dung have shown that not only did dinosaurs and grass live at the same time, but dinosaurs actually ate it. We often hear dogmatic statements about what did or didn't happen millions of years ago, but it's important to realise that these statements involve lots of assumptions, are often based on fragmentary evidence, and can be totally overturned when new evidence comes to light. Well, the answer is actually very simple. Large animals require a lot of food. As we move up food webs <clears throat> from plants to vegetarians to carnivores, um, we have a lot less food to eat and there's a lot less resources for those animals. So if you're large and there's a lot of you, you need to eat something that there's a lot of and that's plants. So large terrestrial mammals and dinosaurs eat plants because that is the most plentiful resource. One of the exciting bits of information that's coming out now, uh, one of the students here, Tom Stidham, has been going through our collections from the late Cretaceous, looking for the remains of birds. And what they're finding is that um, there is at that time, in the late Cretaceous, quite a diversity of modern groups of birds. Uh, Tom has just had a, an art, a little article published in Nature uh, in which he describes a late Cretaceous parrot. Uh, there are more pieces of information out there that are now being described in papers that are uh, being written or in uh, review showing that other kinds of modern birds were present in the um, late Cretaceous. From Science Daily, and they state, for one thing, Birds are found earlier in the fossil record 
than the dinosaurs they are supposed to have descended from. That's a pretty serious problem. And there are other inconsistencies with the bird from dinosaur theories. You see, evolutionists are looking so hard to find evidence to support their worldview that they will resort to speculation, artistic drawings, and indoctrination. Whatever happened to real, observable science and critical thinking?